Okay, straight off my uh, shelf, uh, this model has been sitting there for probably over a year, if not longer. Uh, because my other channel has taken up my time for the last three years, I've been working on models here and there sporadically and just putting them on my website. Um, so, but I did see this kit and I was like, wow, I got to get it. Because I have built a million Panthers, so why not build a million and one? Um, so let's see what we got. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the review on this kit. It's older, so... Um, I think it's really cool. Um, it comes with a great, a great booklet for the instructions. Um, I don't see how you can go wrong with this one. And uh, I was looking at it already earlier, and the tracks, really interesting how they did the teeth on the tracks. You have like a jig where you actually, the teeth are on a sprue, and you just stick them right into the tracks on the other sprue and glue it all together at one shot, which I think is really cool. Um, so that is, uh, definitely doable. I'm going to do it, obviously, um, build this thing out of the box, except I did purchase the, uh, photo etch in the decals. I did purchase the Dashverk Zimrit set for it. Um, so this is obviously the early Panther. So I've got that, and it's pretty cool. It comes with a couple different mantlets here, and uh, I can't wait to actually get into this one. I also, I purchased the decal set from Echelon. Excellent decals. I love, I love their decals. I've put them on so many of my models that uh, I can't tell you. And there is a early panther right here with Zimrit. So obviously that's the one I'm going to be doing. It's the only early Panther out of all these that I think that I could see. There might be another one, but that's the one I'm going to do. I really like the, uh, obviously this uh, little devil's uh, marking. So, yep, it's going to be that one. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to jumping into this one. Here's that jig for the, uh, the tracks, which is kind of cool. So, that being said, let's uh, jump into this one, build it, paint it, and uh, weather it. Okay, so what I've done here to start looking at this kit and to start it, um, obviously there's some steps here, but I'm going to actually put the... Um, guide teeth on the tracks as it shows here because I want them to, to dry and set up and be ready for the next steps and it's really interesting you, you cut these off and you've got one side that's detailed other side's not so that has you better make sure that's you got to make sure that's on the outside so it's visible the good side so I'm going to glue, glue these on and uh, see how everything goes and then uh, take a look at it. Let's get at it. Okay, so here's um, the teeth section glued on. Um, like I said, you got to make sure the detailed side is outside. And now, you know, once this dries, um, I'm going to have to cut the sprue off tree that's holding the individual teeth and uh, I'm gonna have to really do some surgery cut the top part off and then each individual little pieces in between there so it's an interesting concept um, to do it this way so you're not just putting on each individual and they're all cockeyed or I guess you could put a jig for that, but then, wow. 
this eliminates, I guess, some of the work of putting the teeth on. But, you know, with the, um, the new 3D separate track links I've seen companies making now, model companies are, may have to start thinking about putting in 3D printed tracks with their kits, maybe. Uh, if they can't come up with a better solution than this. Um, this is okay, but I'm not, I'm not a big fan of this. I'd rather have like the, in the Tamiya Panthers, just the individual tracks. I'll put them together. Because apparently this might be a little more detailed. I don't know, but, mm. so I'm going to finish these up, uh, let them dry and try to clean them up. Take these, uh, sprue trees off and see how they look after that. It's still going to be some cleanup. Okay. So what I've done now is put one side on. Have the other, I have the other side ready because I want this to dry really good so I don't uh, misalign it while it's drying. I'm trying to put this one on because they're so close. So I have everything ready. Now the really interesting ones are these. You've got these sprues here to go onto the individual tracks. So you snip those off and glue it on like so. Um, so I'm gonna glue all <laughs> one side on like I did here, let those dry really well because these really can get misaligned. So I'll, I'll glue one side on on all of them, let everything set up and dry and then put the other sides on and then put the other sides on these two. Um, as you can see though, all of them, you have to snip two places here. And then you've got this part of the sprue in the way. So I may have to snip off this long tree here just to get to these two. Once, as you can see, once they're on the track, it's gonna be hard to get inside there to snip those off. So I may have to snip that top part off and then do those little ones individual. We'll see what happens. Uh, but like I said, everything's got to dry really good or I'll mess it up. So let's get at it. All right, there you go. Um, all the teeth sprues have been put on. Uh, as you can see, you got to make sure everything's aligned, right? And, and there's some, you know, there's a little bit of warpage, but it wasn't bad and I got everything on there. Um, I think as I mentioned before, I put one side on first all the way through let it dry good then put the opposite side on so i'm not messing with it and i actually cut some of the sprues apart so that way i could handle it better and they weren't so cumbersome being larger like that um, and being my way to to glue on these pieces so i'm gonna let this dry really good and then i have to cut all these sprues off the teeth um I, you know i don't know it seems like in this hobby uh the one thing in all these armor kits they have in common is how they're gonna do their tracks <laughs> back in the day it was rubber band only i i think i remember the tamaya grief uh 250 half track grief um to me a kit had individual link and length tracks. It was like one of the first ones I think I ever built like that. So come a long ways and I still see that uh, they're still trying to figure out a way to uh, make this track situation better. But uh, uh, the, these new 3D tracks that I've been seeing online, if they're as good as they look and as easy to take off their sprue trees, for the excess resin that comes on them, I, I don't know, but they look pretty good. Um, let's see what the future holds. So anyway, let's get at it, let this dry, and I'm gonna trim these off and show you. Okay, so I've, I've cut some of the uh, sprues off here, and it's time consuming. Um, you have to, I had to, cut off the top portion first, leaving these little nubs here. And then after cutting the top 
portion off, then cut the little nubs off each, the side of each guide tooth. So it, it it's, takes a while, you know, here's these it's individual tracks. So these all have to be cut off now. Um, I, I, the hobby knife route was not good because the teeth will break. In fact, on some of these, uh, the last tooth wasn't glued really well. It popped up, so I had to glue it down. Um, so, you know, it's not the most optimum way to, to, to do tracks. Just give us some a bag of individual tracks like DML did, Dragon. A bag of, a bag of those magic tracks is, is great. <laughs> that would be fine. I, I really like those. Um... So I gotta get out of here and just start cutting. Um, I'm gonna try to keep track about how long it took to do all this. Uh, I mean, I'll put it in a description here somewhere. But anyhow, so I've gotta start getting at these and cutting these out now. And, uh, work on that. Okay, I've got the tracks on. Um, not a big fan of the tracks. They're not terrible. Um, I didn't use their jig at all. I was having a hard time, so I ended up putting them the best I could per their um, instructions. And I ended up having to use more links than I wanted to, the separate links. So I have less now for spare tracks. Um, and the second thing is I would not put this part on yet because I put it on, glued it, and then putting these putting these guys on was a big problem here and they didn't want to seed right I had to do some filing I should have just taken this piece out put them in and then put this piece afterwards so put these guys first and this after I also have the back with some of the Zimmerit I put the Zimmerit on with a little bit of super glue the thicker stuff so it doesn't dry right away just dab a little bit of dots here and there. I have to cut, you have to cut it out of the sheet. And then you still gotta trim here and there to get everything to fit right. Um, so that's that for the Zimmerit, that's on. And there, there, there we go so far. So, um, the tracks, like I said, uh, I just would have rather had a package of individual tracks. I don't want to spend the money on metal ones. I, I, I don't want my models to become four or five hundred dollar models. It's just that takes the fun out of it for me if I'm spending that kind of money. On aftermarket, the uh, they should give you really good stuff in the kit for as much as these kits cost now. So the tracks are okay. Um, I got them all on. And, you know, the main thing with tracks, they can make or break a model. You want them to look like they flow right, and you don't want kinks and crazy uh, shapes on them. And so I'm, I'm good with this. It looks okay. Um, some of the side shields, if I put them all or leave some off, will hide some of the track anyway. So let's get at it and start finishing up the rest of this tank okay we're uh, deep into this model now um, earlier I showed the back and these storage bins back here um, I don't know if they're storage bins I forget what they are gas tanks storage bins they actually come with the Zimrit uh, on them um, along with the uh, mantlet for the uh, the gun, so you get these, get two of them, earlier or later, some port hole pieces here for the turret, uh, and um, the Zimrit comes in, in lots of pieces. I've been cutting it out with a hobby knife, you could probably use small scissors in some of the places, but the smaller stuff you're going to have to use a hobby knife. Um, the Zimmerit's really petite, so I kind of like that. Um, it's not really heavy-handed or anything. And each piece fits around. You have to cut each 
each piece out here and uh, it works around all this equipment brackets um, these two pieces come with the uh, Zimmerant as resin pieces so everything has to be glued on with super glue and as I said before I'm using the um, the one that dries uh, slower the gel type here um, I still have to cut out some Zimmer for these pieces got that to do I put the jack I got a couple parts that go under here um, so yeah I, I jumped right to the Zimmer I still got to put on the screens uh, some details there but it's coming along um, so far so good the only part I didn't like with the tracks I, like I said I really rather had a bag of magic tracks and just hurried up and put them on um, so anyway that's where I'm at now and uh, let's get working on it again now okay we've got uh, the Zimmerit on the body put on um, you know these pieces come uh, so you have to trim them out I noticed they were all a little bit big it's hard to trim them exactly uh, but I got pretty close but there's some places I'm not real pleased about um, I've used other Zimmerit sheets that you just glue the uh, brackets and stuff over the top um, but anyway I think I can I think I can live with it and I can work with it um, the other thing I've done is I have a figure that I put together for the driver um, just a half figure here with a little base so that way I can go ahead and glue this in and then with some tweezers uh, get him inside well anyhow I'll get him inside and he'll be he'll be sitting here He'll, he'll be there and he fits in there pretty well in that stand that I made gets him at the right height that I want him so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this in and then put him in afterwards since I can put him in through these the hole here uh, by just taking the turret off so now what I need to do is just finish up the little details on here and then get to the turret so let's get at it
Now here's another issue I had. The light that comes with the kit, I lost one of the, it's two parts, the front and the back. I lost it, I don't know where it's at. It wasn't even on the sprue. So it must have fell off somewhere and I can't find it. But luckily when you're an armor model and modeler and have done a lot, a lot, a lot of models, you have spare parts. So I had an uh, extra one of my spare parts box from a Tamiya kit. So it's uh, functional for it, looks good. And uh, I was lucky to have that. The other thing that's really neat on these kits is the the clamps hooks that hold the tools that usually you put on with photo etched or get 3D parts. They're molded right on and the scale looks really good. So I'm, I'm kind of impressed with that. So I'm glad those had those because I've put the photo etch on, on before. What a, what a hassle that is. So good feature on this kit. The kit, kit's really nice. I mean, there's a lot of small detail for sure. It's a, it's a interesting kit as far as detail goes compared to say a Tamiya or a Dragon. So I like it so far. Like I said, I wasn't impressed with the tracks, but that's okay. They're okay and they look good, so that's all that matters. A little more work than I wanted to do, but hey. So let's get back at it. Okay, here we are uh, with just a few more items put on before I start the turret. The tow cable, um, the travel lock, and just a couple other little things. I'm not putting the hooks yet for the side skirts because I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, so the, I'll wait for those. Here you can see the figure inside the hatch, um, so I'll have to paint him up, but I like the way he floats in there, and I think it's going to look pretty cool. Um, as I showed you before, here's the figure for the turret. Still got to do some painting on him. So let's get at it and start working on the turret probably. Okay, here we have the turret started. Uh, put the Zimrit. Now I had some trouble. Um, you've got to wrap this around. So the first one I put, I screwed up when I came around. I had to trim some of this off and I used some extra I had on that I haven't used for uh, other places. I had luckily I had enough left over and I was able to patch it in there and it patches in pretty good. I would suggest lining up, put super glue just in one section, stick it on and then start wrapping it around, make sure everything, you know, it fits around. And then I put glue. Um, I've left this one out because I'm going to put this port hanging out on the side from there. So I always like that when I see those on those Panthers, early Panthers. Um, and the other weird thing is this part here has all these pieces on it for these vision ports. And you glue it on and then you trim them away and they fit exact. So it's kind of the same situation as a track teeth so that was kind of interesting I guess those couldn't be molded on uh, it seems like the, the dragon and the Tamiya ones are molded on just fine so I don't know there's a little extra stuff here so we're getting closer to completion I gotta just finish up the turret here uh, do some details I'm still working on the only thing I really didn't finish on the uh, main body and I still got to wrap this guy around so I'm waiting for it to dry and uh, we're getting there well, the models completed and here are the figures in place uh, still got to paint the rest of this uh, guy and that went in there completely but uh, kits all together I went ahead and put all the side skirts both sides and I think it's a, a really nice detailed kit. There's parts on it that obviously could be um, engineered better for a little bit ease of build. Um, 
you know, it, it doesn't feel like a Tamiya and it doesn't feel like a Dragon kit. It's somewhere in between. Um, so anyhow, it's uh, coming together and uh, next I'll start the painting process. And I haven't painted a model this big in a while, I guess. So we'll have to uh, take out the old step-by-steps and see how I used to do it. <laughs> Um, it's one thing I wanted to show everybody on these instructions. Whoever has this kit, that right there just just cracked me up. Applying decals. It looks like at last minute they uh, they needed some illustrations on how to do this. <laughs> and somebody maybe just in the crowd there just sketch it up. But um, I thought that was pretty interesting compared to all the the. Uh, detailed instructions in this booklet but anyhow let's get to it and I'll start painting this uh, panther okay I've started painting I've got a can of uh, flat black spray from the Home Depot and what I've done is sprayed the bottom all the bottom black underneath just hit it from underneath and of course the sides, the sides get it too. Um, but I didn't concentrate the sides, just underneath here, the tracks, get all the tracks black. I did spray inside a little bit. Um, and then the tur turret, just from underneath. So what I'm gonna do next, is I'm going to get these two, dark yellow, and this, uh, what is this one? Red brown. I'm gonna hit the whole thing on top now without doing underneath with the red brown. Okay, I um, sprayed it now with the uh, red brown, Tamiya. Um, most of it was from the top and the sides. I left the bottom black for a good shadow effect. Um, so yeah. All of it's painted you know I didn't really like soak it but it's painted you can see there's still some places here in the turret you can still see the gray so my next step will be to use the dark yellow over this now and then after that I will get my airbrush out and do some shading and then the camouflage okay there it is uh, the uh, dark yellow has been put on and this is to me so much quicker than doing all that little airbrush spraying that takes so long to work an area. Now I can get some armored yellow, mix it with some white and do some sh highlighting, shading on this. Um, so it's a, it's a really fast way to get a good coat of paint. Uh, the Tamiya paint is excellent. So it's gonna put a really good base uh, coat primer basically on it and uh, now I can start doing the fun 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 stuff and making it come to life um, as I say I work my models as they're a canvas and I know a lot of guys and, and I appreciate it and I'm I watch the videos they like to paint every little thing and put on stuff on later and and you know those are the technical engineering type guys I'm an artist so I only paint what I see. And you know, if this was gonna come all apart, then I would paint it different. Um, but since it's a static model, I'm painting it as a canvas. And everything is gonna have its own shadows and highlights and everything because it, it's all one piece. And that's the way I look at it. But I understand the engineer type guys who build stuff, paint, put it on, you know, like if you were working on restoring a life-size car or vehicle. Uh, but this is the way I do it. I've been doing it this way for a long time and um, it's my comfort zone. Um, yep, I mean, the pet tracks will have washes that'll differentiate them from the rest of the stuff. And um, So that being said, let's get at the rest of the work now. One more thing before I start uh, highlight painting. Um, the echelon decals come with these markings they go on the panther here um 
So I put those on now because I'm, I, I know those were put on at the factory. So I wanna make sure those are on before I uh, do any shading here. Okay, the uh, highlighting is done with the airbrush. Uh, I mixed some white with the uh, Tamiya Armor Yellow. Um, as you can see, it's pretty extreme, but that's okay. The weathering process and the final dusting over the camouflage and decals is gonna darken it up, but the weathering is really gonna darken it up. But this puts a, a good foundation so the weathering actually makes everything pop out. Um, so as you can see, I just hit a lot of the high points in between the panels there and stuff like that. So um, I guess if this comes off, you can see it's still a little, little wet on top. Um, the camouflage scheme that I'm going to pick, there's two of them here that are early Panther A's, which this is an early Panther A. This one has the skirt, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. So it's just a, a random camouflage I can do with uh, green and red brown. Uh, I, I don't particularly worry about the exact color, if it's German green, German yellow, as long as, or German red brown, as long as it's uh, close because the weathering process and weather, you know all the weathering is gonna change it anyway. I just want it close uh, and look convincing. So let's start the camouflage now. Okay, now I've got the camouflage on. Uh, the red is Roth Braun, AK-17, or AK, I'm sorry, AK-717. And the green I used was AK-796, and that's just NATO green. Um, now, it looks pretty light, and that's good, because uh, I'm going to darken it up a lot, so I don't mind. Um, you know, a few places here I think it's a little thick, but that's okay. Um, I went ahead and started spraying some of these, because they're going to end up getting really weathered in the weathering process, and not even look like that. They're going to be a rusty iron color. Um, so, yep, that's it. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna airbrush the tracks a little bit darker brownish red color. And I'm just gonna do a quick airbrush on them, get close to the, close in here. And it's okay if it gets on that because I'm gonna put a wash for these rubber tires. Um, some of the places that got too much, that's okay because I'm gonna weather it and those are gonna kind of disappear with the weathering. Any places that the airbrush I hit too hard. Now, if you don't like that, you can always go back with the base armor yellow color and go in between. And I've done that before. It actually is kind of cool. But right now it looks a little too light. But after I put the decals, I'm going to dust it with armor yellow and it's going to change this whole thing. So let's get at the next process. I'm going to just spray the tracks. After I spray the tracks, I'm going to put the decals on and then do the overspray. Okay. With AK-718, it's a dark reddish brown. I just hit the tracks and I sprayed the tracks right on the, right on the model. And I got a little bit on the wheels, who cares? Uh, it'll all disappear in the weathering process. I've got the fronts sprayed. And you can see. See, there's some on the wheels, that's okay. And I spray the tracks here, darken them up because they're going to be rusty. Everything else is going to be detail painted. The tow cables, the tools, and stuff, all be done now. Um, so I'm going to put the decals on, let them dry really good, and then overspray it with the uh, dark yellow, armor yellow. Let's get at it.
Okay, decals are on. Um, I had to fudge here a little bit because I forgot that this hole was here. And um, I should have cut this one out, put the 35 and then the one there, but I didn't. I was able to fudge it a little bit and it's gonna be fine. But I'm cutting, I'm poking little holes everywhere because I'm gonna spray it now with a clear flat, that tester's clear flat, and that's gonna really set these guys. And then after the clear flat dries, I will dust it so that way it looks like these aren't brand new. And it's gonna tie all this weather, I mean, and it's gonna tie all the camouflage and markings up together. So yeah, the uh, echelon decals are just always excellent, excellent. And uh, I, I love putting these things on and it, you know, the, the uh, instruction sheet with the placement and markings, camel markings always are great. So yeah, this just gets it so that way there's no bubbles. Okay. So this will go this will go next over everything. It's gonna seal everything. Um, and I'm gonna have to let it dry real good, then I'm gonna overspray it with the armor yellow. And it, it's gonna tone all the camouflage down, tie everything together. So let's spray this on now. Okay, I've uh did the next step spraying on the uh flat lacquer stuff uh this stuff man it really brings the decals down and it seals them really good and it i think it actually uh sets them and it makes them adhere right into all the cracks as you can see i really like these decals i like that little devil guy this fifth panzer division so anyhow these go decals are on and I'm gonna now I'm gonna overspray it to finalize the painting and then the rest will be weathering and detail painting. Let's get at it. Okay, look at that. Everything's tied together now and the markings don't look like they uh, were just painted on there. Um, so I mixed just water with F XF. I mixed this XF60 dark yellow, which was the base yellow in the first place earlier. And then it was mixed with the white to highlight, camouflaged. And now I oversprayed it. I mixed this probably about 60, 40, 60 water to 40 paint. Um, you can do a little less paint and do it in more successive coats till you get what you like. But this is, this is to me what you want. It tones down the camouflage, uh, gives the whole thing a more unified look. And um, I think it just ties everything together. And that part just really, really makes a difference. Now when I weather it, the washes are gonna just bring out the details. It's gonna kind of darken some of the places a little bit. Um, but I think it's gonna, it's gonna work out just right, so. I'm pretty happy with it. The, the markings came out really nice on there. Look at that. Um, can't beat that. And uh, I think it's going to be kind of cool when, uh, when you add the figures at the end. It's going to be really good. So next steps are detailed painting of all the tools, uh, anything that's a different color. 
tone, whatever, on the tank, I'm going to paint, like I said, the tools, uh, tow cable, um, the hook here, tow hook probably was painted dark yellow and it just probably had scratches on it and just aged and however much it was used. But, you know, a lot of this stuff was just was painted on the tank. I think they did take the tools off. Other than that, and then you know, in the field, they sprayed it. They, you know, sometimes they had like a, a oil thinner to thin the paint, which, which made it, you know, a lot different looking than if they can only just mix water with it or something else. Um, so, as you can see, the tracks here uh, it sprayed them, so they're already starting to look like something, but they're going to get a treatment of weathering. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with it. This is what it, this is the finish I wanted, and I think it's going to come out good now. So let's get at the detail painting. Okay, I've uh, painted the tools, and I just painted the shovels, the, the axe handles black, uh, and the handles with a light, I guess, kind of a yellowish, brownish. Uh, paint that I had and I, I don't I just pick something that looks close because I'm going to do some more weathering over it and some detailed painting um, I still got to paint these a little dark brown color because I know those handles were darker so I've got this painted and then the uh, end of this hammer uh, the tow cables painted and then of course around the edges here I'm going to paint this with armor yellow here in a minute so it matches up with this one and of course the road wheels are painted black now uh, I know most people paint them and then put them on well you know how I always say I use my vehicle as a canvas so what I do is I mix up some black and thin it out fairly thin but just enough to basically stain it and I put it on these road wheels um, and that's another reason why I start from black underneath and, and all the parts on in the back so that way if anything shows through it just looks dark you don't see it so I've touched everywhere here where the road wheels are with the wash and it kind of flows in there it works pretty good I think so that's what I do for the road wheels, um, like I said, next I'm going to paint this armor yellow to contrast it there. And then it's time for the oil wash. Um, and I'm really liking the way these markings look. And I'm, I'm really liking the way this tank is coming out so far. I think the wash now is going to really set things off. So let's get at that so we can... Uh, see how that's going to look okay this step in the weathering process is the wash now what i have right here is burnt umber artist oils uh right here is turpenoid odorous turpentine i have a small little dish here of and where i put some of the artist oil in in here so i can work with it better and i get some of the Turpenoid, put it in the little dish. And I work with this in here as my wash. So I can have a little more control of how much I want without it being the same amount, too much too, or less or whatever. And I can pick what I want. And then I just get some turpenoid on there. There's already some stuff. So, there you go. I'm going to start doing this over the whole vehicle. And you're going to see a huge difference in the way it looks. Now, what I will also do is in places where there's too much or not enough, I'll add some or I'll take some away with a clean brush. I can go back in with a clean brush here and move it around however I want. 
So let's get out that and finish this guy up. Okay, check that out. The wash is on and uh, what a difference in what it does to a model. Uh, I would have to say the wash is uh, probably the most important thing in an armor model. A good flat finish and a good wash will make any vehicle look great. Um, one of my friends who also builds models says, you're not that good of a model builder. You just know how to do a really good wash. And he's probably right. I, I don't spend as much time on the build as most people. I I spend all the time on the finish because I just feel like it's the finish that counts with this type of models. You could build a, a fantastic model with tons of photo ash and aftermarket parts and everything. And when you paint it, and if it doesn't come out looking convincing, all that doesn't really matter. You could just build out of a box and really do a nice paint weathering job and it looks a hundred times better. So that's something to think about. I, I would almost rather see a, a model not painted that has tons of photo etch done very well and aftermarket. It's almost more enjoyable to see it that way for those types of kits anyway, because once you paint it, you don't see it anyway. Um, so now I'm going to do some more weathering um, now it's all going to be with pastels. Um, I'm going to mix pastels with the turpenoid, grind them down, and you know, you could use pigments out of a jar or however they come. I just have tons of pastels, so that's what I use still. Um, so let's get that weathering done now. We're going to start adding some rust to the bare tracks, uh, finish detail paintings of the tools. Um, the tracks but as you can see everything's kind of flowing together now and I painted everything right on the, the model so I'm pretty pleased so far it's uh, looking like a German World War II late war paint scheme um, the weathering's coming out good so far so let's get at it okay so what I've done now is I've ground up my pastels which I have a bunch. Here's what I sand them with, as you can see. I've ground them up, and I will mix uh, some of the terpenoid. Um, I usually try to use clean terpenoid for this. Uh, I've got 
some stuff here that's not that clean, but I think it'll work. But I would do as I say, not as I do. I would suggest clean terpenoid because I don't know how much pigment you already have in your terpenoid, and that's pretty fresh. So I'm going to go ahead and do it because I've done it before. But for any new people, I would use fresh. So what I'm going to use this for is on the tracks. Any other places, I'm going to want some rust, like probably the um, tow cable and uh, probably around some of the tools that might get rusted. So we'll take a look at that. So let's get at that and start doing this process. Okay, here it is. Uh, <laughs> check out the uh, these tracks. Now, a lot of people just put rust. They'll mix up some type of rust and just put it on straight, and it's just rust. Well, that's fine, but I, I don't think that's like how it is in real life. So that's why I added some of that blue and green here. Um, I just wanted to break that color up a little bit, add some life. And um, I might tone down the, the greens just a little bit, but not much. I really like the way it just adds some life to it. Um, the tools received it too a little bit. Um, they've got more rust on them. And you know, places like here, I added it here because of it, a zimmer came off. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, coming out exactly how I want it. You can see the Zimmer pattern now. Like I said, everything is starting to tie together. The weathering actually covered up some of the places where the Zimmer, I didn't particularly care the way it fit in between, but once you weather it, see, you don't see it. That's why I, I recommend everybody finish their models. You know, don't don't think, oh, this is not gonna look good. You gotta just finish it. And that's how one you learn and two, you'd be surprised. The mufflers, I add a little more of the blue right here. It just gives it like a like a metal kind of irony, hot, burnt, sooted look, but without just being black. I don't want black, pure black. And the tracks just I just like the way the tracks look. Added some rust on the shovel, the pick. The tow cable has rust on it. And uh, yeah, it's starting to look like I want it to look. The um, rest of it just needs now some dirt, just a little bit of dirt here and there, and then some silver highlights, which, you know, for the gunmetal places like things like that. And uh, and then we should be done and I got to finish the figures up and I'm done with this one. So the way I'm going to do the dirt is just like on the M30. The way I'm going to do the, the dirt and dust is going to be the way I did on the M35 Hungarian um, armored car that I have a video on, long video also. I did a complete build, paint, everything like this one. I'm going to mix the pastel colors with the terpenoid and apply it like I did, but very lightly. You almost don't even want to see the mixture go on, but when it dries, it, it really stands out like it, you know, it has in these places. So the thicker you put it on, the thicker it's going to you know, show up as 
opaque. So right here, I actually, oops, right here, I actually added a little bit of um, yellow ochre pastel colors, just a little bit on there. And I really like the way that looks. So let me do that on this, the tips on the other ones. Uh, and the shovels and stuff will receive the dirt and a few other places on the tank. And, you know, I want it to fill in the cracks of these tracks and that's going to tie everything together. Put some of the road wheels, um, places where guys walk on the tank. And uh, I think that's going to take care of it. So let's get at that. Okay, the cool thing with pastels and with pigments too, if you have pigments, you can mix two colors together. Um, I didn't want it that much of a orangey soil that's going to be on there. So I'm going to mix these two together, lighten it up, change it a little bit. And then with terpenoid, I'm going to do this. See, I'm making a little wash. But I want this to be very, very diluted. And wherever you put it, it's really going to show up really matte and like a filter, I guess. A lot of people call it a filter. So I'm going to put that on there. And uh, just in certain places, I want it to go where guys are walking on the tank. You know, just certain places where guys are walking on the tank. I see up here. You know, they walked on to get in the turret. Yeah. You know, I think I'm actually going to do some chipping with a sponge too afterwards because that's always kind of cool. So let me finish this up. I'm going to add it in the tracks um, back here. Any place where there could be some dirt accumulated. Let's get at it. Okay, there it is. Um, most of the weathering's complete. As you can see, everything's dried. The washes, the pastel weathering. Um, 
I'm really pleased. Uh, looks like a German late war panther. Um, a lot, a lot of work goes into this. I, I, you know, if you just think you're going to slap a model together, put some paint on, do a wash, do some filters, you know, a little detail. It, it, <laughs> if you've watched my whole video here, it, it's a process and it's long, uh, especially on the larger vehicles. That's why probably in the future, I'm going to do a lot smaller stuff. Um, and get the same points across that you can use on the larger vehicles. But yeah, I mean, it's coming out exactly how I wanted it. And um, uh, all I've got next to do is paint the figures and add some metallic finishes to say the pieces of the track that would get it and maybe on these road wheels inside. I think the Panther tank's kind of scraped in here. I can hit that with a pencil, hit this with a pencil, hit the edges of this with a pencil. And um, yeah, I, I really like the way the mufflers came out here. It's kind of cool. And uh, so you can see the tow cables painted, weathered. Uh, came out really cool looking. So if you refer back to how all this looked before, it's a lot different. Uh, the Zimmerit stands out really good. The camouflage isn't real pronounced where it looks like, oh, wow, this thing just has been painted. Um, it's been out in the weather, rain, wind, dust, mud. So it's got some weathering on it. Um, but as you can see, if you've watched the whole video, I paint everything on there. And uh, it's kind of like figure painting, I think. Because um, on a figure, you got to paint everything on there pretty much. So I see some places right there that I don't like. So I'm going to hit that with some uh, terpenoid, smooth it out, and uh, just take care of that. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to adding figures because that really gives it scale and brings it to life. So. I've just got a few things left to paint on these figures. I should get it done fairly quickly. I'd show how I do it, but I'm, I'm still messing with figures. I, I don't want to do a step-by-step -step or a too big a thing on figures yet because I, I did one in the uh, the Honey Stewart British Tank video, which you can watch, and I'm just, just not happy yet with the figure painting all the way. Uh, as I said, I used to figure paint in oils mostly, and I really like that. I've tried to change the acrylics, but I've, I've really looked at my figures done in oils, and I really like the way they look. So uh, I may have to start gluing at least the faces in oils. I'm not sure yet, though. So we'll see on the next next few. So that being said, let's uh, finish this guy up, and I'll show you the completed panther. Ah, I just thought of one more thing I wanted to do and show you guys. Um, I'm going to do some chipping. So on my chipping, if you've ever looked at my step-by-steps that I have on my website a long time ago, and I, like I said, they're still there. If you click on the model, most of them will just link to the model in the gallery. But I do it with a sponge and just going to hit some of this Burnt Umber Artist Oils. Get it on there and then just get some paint chips on the edges of warm, you know, places that are going to wear. Um, I got these uh, sponges really cheap at the store. So last uh, me and the next, I don't know, few generations of armor modelers. But uh, other stuff is cheap and I'm going to use it to do the chipping now. So what I do is... I'll get some of this on the sponge. I see here I have just some forceps holding it because I have forceps. And you see, you can start doing that. And then on the edges here, boom, you're going to get chipping and worn effect. So I'm going to do that now. And uh, I'll show you the results after I'm done. Well, there it is. Uh, I'm going to call this one done for now. And I just need to 
paint the figures and finish them up. Stick them in there and take some photos and let you check out the final product here. Um, as you can see, I've added some silver here and there. Some highlights to the tracks and uh, a few places here and there on the shovel. And um, yep, gave it some life. Uh, the chipping is all done. And uh, I'm going to call this one finished for the weathering. And I just got to do the figures, as I said. So let's uh, complete this guy. Okay, here's the final model. Got the figures on. I painted them eh, kind of in a hurry here just to get them on here. And that, that's the bad thing about trying to do videos and working to do stuff for social media. Sometimes you rush it or you don't take as much time. But I, I really took a lot of time on this one over the last couple weeks I started. Um, I'm going to put in the end of the video when I started this and when I finished it and um, see how many days it was. And I worked a few a few hours a day, some some days three, some days four hours, some days one hour. You know, screwed around a little bit here and there, but uh, I'm, I'm pleased with it. It looks like a German Panther towards the end of the war. Uh, they did use these early Panther A's. These are the ones after the D. Panther D is the first ever rev. Um, so they didn't have the machine gun port there. Uh, it came later on the Panther A, late. And um, uh, the Zimmer came out cool. I really like the detail on it, it looks nice. The figure there, he came out, came out cool. And the uh, hatch, I just, just brings so much when you do stuff like that to a model, you know, show something. But uh, yeah, decals are cool. I know they're, they're weathered, but man, they, they do look cool like that. It looks like it's been out in the field. Um, I toned down the green and blue on the on the tracks so they wouldn't it wouldn't stand out that much. It was it was a little too much, and. Um, yeah, pipes look good. Got a lot of spillage on the back of the deck there, the uh, where they, they put fuel in, stuff like that. Um, finished the painting, all these little details, which didn't take long. They were already done. Alpine figure, as I said before, and uh, one I made up for my spare parts box for the driver and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a really good model. Like I said, it's somewhere in between a Dragon BML kit and a Tamiya, uh, but I really liked the detail on the tool clamps, things like that. The small detail's great. The tracks were just really kind of silly. Uh, I think they spent, I spent more time on the tracks in this model than, than the model itself, I think. It just there was just too much to, to to snip and clean up and glue and then put together. It was just way too much for, for something you barely see. I, I just I have a hard time with that. <laughs> but anyway, it's done and uh, I got to quit complaining and I, I'm pleased with it and looks good. Um, maybe it'll work its way in a diorama one day. It's going to have to be a big diorama. I don't like big dioramas. I like small vignettes where you get all the action combined in a small space and you can really detail a small space way better than a big space. And when there's so much going on, you just it looks impressive, large dioramas, but the small vignettes with a lot of action or something interesting, like an interesting vehicle, that's well detailed, things like that. I, I really like that. So anyway, um, let's call this one quits. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. I'm going to plan to keep putting more videos out here and there and appreciate you watching the ones that I've used my older work. Um, I think it's still, still passable. Uh, I'm getting good views on it, so I hope everybody likes those. And uh, 
we'll see what's up next. I've got a few kits that I've ordered and a couple's on the shelf here. So until next time, it's uh, Armor Models by Glenn Bartolotti.